In this example, we're given a square root function in two variables. And what our goal is, is first we're going to find the partial derivative with respect to x, and then we're going to evaluate that partial derivative at a couple different um, values. So to get going on this, what I'm going to do first is rewrite the square root as an exponent. So we can say this is the same thing as 5x squared plus 2y squared, all raised to the 1 half power, as opposed to having a square root over the whole thing. Now hopefully we can see that we have a function within another function. So the 5x squared plus 2y squared is inside of this function where it's kind of like something raised to the 1 half power. So we're going to have to use the chain rule to take our derivative, our partial derivative I should say. So first what we're going to do is take the derivative of the outer function, so the 1 half comes down, and we're going to reduce that exponent by 1. So 1 half minus 1 is going to give us a negative 1 half for our new exponent. We're going to keep everything on the inside the same. 5x squared plus 2y squared. But then we're going to need to multiply by the derivative of the inner function with respect to x. So that means we're going to treat x as though it's our variable. And if a term doesn't have an x, we treat it as though it's just constants. So you can see we have our 5x squared. There our variable uh, is x. So what we're going to do is go ahead and use the power rule to take the derivative. So the 2 comes down and gets multiplied by the 5. That makes 10x. And then we reduce the exponent by 1. So 2 minus 1 makes 1 for our new exponent. We certainly don't have to write that 1 in there. But then as we look at our next term, the 2y squared, that 2y squared doesn't have any x's, all right? So we treat that as though it's all constants. And if that's all constants, the derivative of a constant is going to be 0. Now we may want to rewrite this a little bit, make it a little bit cleaner. I don't like seeing these with negative exponents. So what I'm going to do is initially make this into a fraction and rewrite it without negative exponents. So I'm going to initially leave the 1 up in the numerator and the 2 in the denominator. Next, I'm going to move um, the set of parentheses that has the negative 1 half as its exponent down to the denominator and make it a positive exponent. Hopefully we remember that exponent rule. And then from there, we still have that 10x plus 0 that's at, at the end. We can think of that as being over 1, so it can move up into the numerator, right? 10x, right? We don't need the plus 0. We can say 10x times 1 makes 10x up in our numerator. One last thing I'm going to do before we start evaluating this is I'm going to rewrite that 1 half as an exponent. It's going to go back to being a square root, just because I am more comfortable seeing it as a square root. All right, now we have the partial derivative with respect to x, and a lot of times that's the biggest challenge. From here, what we want to do is we want to replace our x value with 0 on this first example and our y value uh, with 1. So wherever we see a, an x in the, uh, in the partial derivative, we're going to replace it with a 0. Wherever we see a y, it's going to get replaced with a 1. A little bit of simplifying. Hopefully we can see 10 times 0 makes 0 in our numerator. And then we have 2 times the square root of, well, 5 times 0 is 0, plus 2 times 1 is 2. So we have 0 over 2 times the square root of 2 with a little simplifying. Because our denominator is not also 0, this is all going to be equal to 0. 0 divided by any number is 0. This side's maybe 0. Okay, next let's take a look where we're not plugging in zero, but maybe a little bit more complicated looking numbers. So again, we're going back to our partial derivative. Wherever we see an x, this time it's going to get replaced with a 2. Wherever we see a y, it's going to get replaced with negative 4. And we're going to simplify this down completely so you see all the steps involved with this. The plugging in here, the evaluating, hopefully is not too bad, right? Replace that x with a 2. We have 2 times the square root of 5 times 2 squared plus 2 times negative 4 squared. 
Okay, well, two multiplied by the entire numerator, two multiplied by the entire denominator, those at least get to cancel out. Um, and I guess we could have simplified our original. They could have simplified here and made 5x over the square root of 5x squared plus 2y squared. All right, but at this point, we end up with a 10 in our numerator. And let's simplify what's left over here. We have 5 times when we square the 2 first, we'll get 5 times 4 makes 20. Plus, we square the negative 4 first, that's positive 16 times 2 makes 32. We'll go ahead and add those together, and we get 10 over the square root of 52. And an online homework system may accept this, or it may want you to go ahead and rationalize our denominator. Get a little bit better answer along the way, too. So the first thing I would do is go ahead and say, well, I know that 52 can be factored a little bit. It can be 4 times 13. So we have 10 over the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. We were looking for a perfect square that was a factor of 52. So it's really 10 over square root of 4 makes 2 times square root of 13, which will be 5 over the square root of 13. Now, a little bit better answer. We still have a radical in the denominator, so how will we deal with that? We can rationalize it by multiplying numerator and denominator both by the square root of 13. So what that's gonna get us to is five times the square root of 13. And then we have the square root of 13 times the square root of 13. It's just gonna give us 13. We had two copies multiplied together. So that is a fantastic exact answer there. Um, we could put it in our calculators and get an approximation if we wanted to. It's going to be approximately 1.38675. Dot, dot, dot. Keeps going. Um, so I hope this helps out as you're working on finding partial derivatives initially and then evaluating those partial derivatives at given values. Good luck.